Welcome back, Lion Country. We appreciate you being with us this morning uh, for this uh, second volume of uh, Hawks Talk uh, video blog. And uh, I think we have several things that are very uh, pertinent uh, that you'll uh, want to hear this morning. And uh, some things may pertain to you and some things may not, but we're going to give a lot of information out because we feel that this is uh, very critical uh, to, the, to the operations of our district at this time. The district is very much attuned to uh, the state of our community and where we are today. And, and, and believe me, there's, there's no one that, that misses our students any more than, than I do as superintendent and, and being able to, to walk the halls of our buildings and, and see learning going on and all the activities that our kids love doing. And uh, the district still stands very committed to as soon as we can safely uh, come back in the buildings. That's very much our goal and our aim to do so. Um, with that said, uh, our district is operating as many across the state today in, in a manner that's uh, never happened before. Many of you may have seen the, the recent governor's order that he put out as well as uh, orders all across the, the state. The uh, vocabulary has not really caught up with where we are as a school district today. But rest assured that, that everything that we're doing is in compliance with the governor's order uh, and is it through the guidance of the Texas Education Agency. And I just uh, I, um, I give a shout out to uh, uh, Commissioner Morath and all the information and guidance that he's provided from the Texas Education Agency has been just commendable. Um, uh, our district is, is operating uh, with the, the necessities of number one, we, we are, are continuing to feed our students. And that is so important that we feed those in our community. Our, our food lines are open. Uh, they're not open just for socioeconomically disadvantaged students. They're open for every student from uh, age 18 down. And I, I uh, invite you to take uh, advantage of that. Uh, the, uh, the district is also providing instructional resources. Uh, and so when we, when we talk about that, the, the functioning of the district, Yes, the brick and mortar classes have been postponed, but our district is to continue, continuing to keep kids safe and accelerate learning, which is the two uh, crucial aspects of our mission in LISD. You know, we, we continue to practice safe practices as far as our staff and, and complying with all the CDC guidelines and, and the social distancing that, that needs to occur. But at the same time, uh, you know, we do have skeletal staffs throughout the district that are, are meeting the needs of the compliance and the guidance with the Texas Education Agency. So, you know, the, the things that the district continues to do is, is we're, we're planning for absolutely the worst uh, and hoping and praying for the best. So, um, you know, our school calendar will be opened up through May 29th. Uh, May 29th would be our last day of instruction in this school calendar. Uh, that kind of does away with the flex schedule. Um, and I think that it's uh, very germane and relevant that we need those days to ensure that our students have uh, had exposure and mastery to the state standards uh, at that point. So uh, I've had a lot of students DM me uh, on social media and talk about this notion of, well, are, are the seniors going to come back uh, in the class of 2021 and have to go to uh, um, to go to Christmas. And so uh, that's not going to happen as long as we can provide uh, instructional supports. Uh, you know, we're going to end on that day. Uh, but we're very hopeful uh, that we'll be back in school before then. And so, yes, we have canceled classes up until April 3rd uh, to comply with the governor's guidelines. But at this point, um, I think moving forward, it's more germane to just uh, uh, look at at, uh, at an opening date. You know, when when can we safely open again? And so, you know, at this point, the district has just kind of paused all uh, classes until we can get to that point that we can safely reopen the district back again. Um, students have uh, have also asked me, will they be going through the summer? And the answer to that is no. And so, the commitment on behalf of the district is to ensure that we're doing an adequate job with these instructional supports and instructional resources uh, to ensure that there's an educational process going on out there for our students so that come May 29th, we can truly 
bring closure to the school year. Now, one thing I know that's on the seniors' mind is is uh, graduation, and uh, what 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 happens with graduation? Well, it, every activity, uh, from my standpoint as superintendent, we're going to explore every avenue to ensure that that students, if at all possible, get the experiences that that they can possibly have. And so uh, that's every activity, graduation including. Uh, one, one thing about graduation, it being a ceremony, even once we uh, conclude the school year at that point, if it's not safe enough to have graduation, then we would bump graduation back. So look, I know that with family coming in, uh, things like that, that it creates chaos. Uh, but the main thing is, is that you know, these kids only graduate high school one time, and uh, they've put 13 years of work and effort into uh, their diploma, and we want to make sure that we do it right. Uh, we do it safe, but we want to do it right as well. And so we're going to do everything we can to offer that opportunity toward the end of the school. Um, so we're, we've kind of moved through phase one. Uh, April the 3rd will end phase one as far as instructional supports go. Um, so what does is, what is April the 6th look like? Well, I think the one thing about uncertainty is uh, everything is uncertain. And each day we continue to get more guidance and guidelines that come down from the CDC, that come down from the state, that come down from the Texas Education Agency. And we have to remain flexible, you know. Uh, could we open school on April the 6th? I don't think anybody can tell you a date that we can do anything at this point. And even the most uh, astute medical profession, uh, governmental agencies, uh, basically is no more than a guess. And so everything that we've done as a district is to try to put out a plan in place that will ensure that we can act and react to whatever transpires and whatever happens, continue to be safe and to continue to do the things that we need to do in order to meet our obligations as a district. And so phase two, uh, we will start into more of a, di a direct instruction model. And so uh, come Wednesday, you can check the LISD website. Uh, we have junior high Chromebooks going out. Uh, on, on the following week, we will have our fourth and fifth grade Chromebooks going out. And so you can be looking for information uh, on those things. Um, and then there will be information on a, on a high-tech delivery uh, from pre-K to uh, third grade as well as, as we move forward. Um, and I've had a lot of questions on, well, um, what about uh, an alternative? or What about a different method? Well, I, I remind you that in the day that we live in, there's always going to be a high-tech version and there's always going to be a low-tech version. And so... Uh, you know, wh whatever happens as we move forward between now and May 29th, uh, there will be a low-tech version that uh, students can take advantage of as well. Um, the, uh, the, uh, the question that I've got is, uh, and continue to get is, is this for a grade? Well, my philosophy is that we don't ever put anything out that isn't for a grade. And so uh, the instructional resource, resource packets that have been put out, uh, teachers have worked hard, students have worked hard, and so, uh, you know, when, when those students come back, uh, whatever date that is, then those packets will be turned in, and teachers will grade those. Um, and then moving forward in phase two, from April 6th to whenever either we uh, open school or May 29th comes, uh, what we do there is for a grade. Now, this is very important, students. I, I need all the students to uh, to uh, to really uh, buy in and do the things that uh, that we know that you're capable of and our expectations in Lion Country, both from the school standpoint and both from your parents' standpoint, is is that we want you to get something out of the last sc scope and sequence in our school. Uh, we have uh, roughly six to seven more weeks of of uh, uh, standards uh, which you need to be exposed to or that you need to master. And it's crucially important that, that we understand that you really only get out of education what you put into it. 
And so what we need is a, is a good foot forward effort uh, in, in, in trying to, uh, to do the best that we can with what we have to learn those standards and moving forward. And so, you know, how successful that we'll be, I know our teachers are working hard and I know I can count on you students to work equally as hard to make this uh, rest of the semester a success. Preparing for, you know, moving forward in April 6th, I've also had a lot of questions and, and uh, 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 emails from parents about uh, internet access. And, and look, we, we know that we live in, in rural East Texas and we have 306 square miles of the school district, which is very much different than anybody else around us. And so let me talk just briefly about the things that we've done and are doing to, uh, to try to close the gap in that area. Our friends at Livcom, uh, you can reach out if, if you live in the city of Livingston and you do not have internet access. You can reach out to our friends at Livcom and they're offering for those who qualify uh, two months free. They'll, they'll hook up the internet for you and, uh, and get that thing going to, to kind of get your student through these two months. And they also offer reduced student rates beyond that. Um, but, but that's going on. Uh, we will be uh, posting and standing up uh, documents uh, that reflect the phone companies. Uh, you know, I know there's several phone companies that have opened up the data piece uh, of their phones so that there's no bandwidth issue uh, with any of their phone plans. Uh, they've opened that up for the time being. The other things that, I, that I'd bring to your attention is, is that, uh, you know, we have uh, worked in the district to ensure that there's hot spots uh, throughout our community. Uh, Matthews Park has a line hotspot uh, that students can go to and, and upload uh, their, their work. And I remind you that in using these, these Chromebooks that you can work offline and that you go to a hotspot and you can upload and download. So Matthews Park is, is an area for that. Uh, most students have found out if they get close to the school buildings that those hotspots work uh, there as well. But we have uh, upgraded a much more robust system. And currently, if you pull up into the high school student parking at the parking lot, um, we've got Wi-Fi throughout that parking lot. So uh, your parents can pull in there and you can, you can upload, download, or you can work from your Chromebook there uh, as well. Uh, Livcom, behind Livcom, uh, there is a, a, a spot, a grassy area that the district utilizes for parking in our football games. That that spot is opened up and there's there's Wi-Fi there uh, as well. And another thing the district is working on is our technology department is working uh, tirelessly to uh, enhance the uh, the uh, hot spots throughout uh, the rural areas and that are not in the city, but that other 306 square miles of our school district. Um, and our friends at East Texas Communications is crucial in that. Um, and as soon as that uh, information it becomes available exactly where those spots are, we will stand up some things on the district website for you to see where that you can drive to those hot spots in our more rural areas and take advantages of uploading and downloading at that, at that juncture. And we appreciate those partnerships and all that they do. Where, whether your child has a Chromebook or not, uh, you can get into Google, Google Chrome, Google Classroom um, uh, with, with your own device, uh, with your uh, device at home or with your phone. Uh, and we know that, that uh, our recent survey that 88% of our students in grades four through 12 uh, have that access, uh, but um, we don't wanna leave anybody behind. And we're, we're, we're continuing to work to make a commitment to to reach every student and to do the best we possibly can with the circumstances that we're given. I'd just like to, to once again reiterate that, um, you know, I, I really have to commend the governor uh, and, and TEA with Commissioner Morath uh, for uh, really calling on us. Uh, they, they've called on us as an education profession, as students, as, as parents and communities to do something that we've never been done before. And so, uh, they task us with this challenge. And I'm so proud of those uh, areas that have stepped up. And uh, you know, the ladies in our child nutrition department are doing fabulous. Uh, 
they they have uh, exceeded every expectation that I have. I'm so appreciative of them. But but we've got various areas working. Uh, we've got our technology department that is working as as, as diligently as they can to uh, support instruction and provide the most robust uh, opportunities for our kids and to make sure that, that this thing comes across uh, in, in the effective manner that, that we want it to. Uh, we've got staff, uh, teachers, uh, we've got uh, office staff that's, that's working in skeleton crews, some working from home uh, to meet the needs of, of what we've been tasked to. And I just call on you as a community uh, as, as line country to, uh, you know, to really, we all have to be one. And, uh, you know, we, we have to, uh, to pull together uh, in order for this to work, to, to keep our community and our schools as safe as possible, uh, to offer the best education that we possibly can for our students. Um, it's gonna take all of us. And last but not least, I just thank our, our school board uh, who continues to support this process and, and continues to, uh, uh, to, to fund the things that are needed for our students and to uh, think outside the box in order to accomplish the things that, that we need accomplished. Um, with that said, um, you know, the other aspect of that is, and I can tell you, uh, while I don't speak on behalf of the school board, I know that, that you got seven individuals on that board that is, is very loving of our community and very understanding and um, had conversations with them. And, and we all know the, uh, the things that, that are going on in our community and the hardships. And, and we've got folks working and folks not working and financial uh, insecurities and everything. And, and, and we, want to be, we want to be a good partner in this. And so, uh, as we move forward with our lessons and we move forward with this thing, I think that uh, the thing that, that we continue to, uh, uh, to look at is, is making sure that we're reasonable. Uh, reasonable with the learning that's going on, uh, reasonable with the expectations and, uh, of what's happening as we, as we roll these things out. And that's why we're going and doing everything that we can to ensure that you have communication in a timely manner. And um, we all know that things will probably change again. And uh, when they do, uh, we'll come back and, and we'll communicate because there's some things that's out of our control. But the things that we're committed to do is work with the things that are in our control uh, to ensure that, that we're meeting our objectives. Um, Last but not least, let me just tell you how much uh, we miss each of our students at home, and, and my gosh, we, we want them here, uh, you know, and, and to kind of get back to a sense of normalcy. Uh, know that everyone is in my thoughts and prayers. Uh, please, if you have questions, email us, call us, uh, reach out to us in those manners, and we will try as diligently as we can to get back with you um, on the things that affect this uh, this uh, COVID-19 uh, response plan. Uh, and with that said, we'll close and God bless each of you.